Hey there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I have some exciting news today. At least I hope you think it's exciting as I do. I am bringing back my stamp set of the month series. So every month I am picking a stamp set that I love and I'm sharing it with you. Each week I'll bring you new ideas with that stamp set so you can see it used different ways. I like to do little giveaways in there too. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to be bringing you these videos every Thursday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time so you can set an alarm, you can click the little bell below, and YouTube will let you know when I have new videos, but it's going to be tons of fun. So stay tuned, and I bet you're wondering what this month's stamp set is. I mean, maybe you saw it at the beginning, but... It is the Would You Be Mine stamp set from Lawn Fawn. I am so excited about having new critters from Lawn Fawn. I think these beavers are darling. I have some fun ideas with them and I can't wait to share them with you. So for today, we're going to be making a gift box with some gift cards inside. So you can give this whole thing away as a gift. It's so cute. So let's jump in and get started with our very first episode of Stamp Set of the Month for this new year. Here we go. All right, we are starting with the gift box. So let's pull out the gift box die from Lawn Fawn. Now this die has been around for a while. It's one of the first dies I actually ever got from Lawn Fawn and I love it. I love making little boxes, cute things with paper. I would love to know if you like making those along with cards also. So if you do, let me know in the comments below. I die cut this from some wood grain cardstock also from Lawn Fawn in this dark brown color. And I also cut a second one because you need two to make the box from some brown cardstock. I felt like the base of the box didn't need to be the wood grain. And you can cut it from an eight and a half by five and a half inch piece of paper and you get just a tiny bit left on each side. Now on the lid, I wanna use these dies to cut a little notch out. You wanna line up that flat part with the edge of your paper and then they come off beautifully. I had mine up a little high so I had to kind of just pull it off, but that's gonna allow you to take the lid off very easily. Now, because these are the same size, you have to alter the top a little bit. So you wanna cut off all four of these tabs and this is gonna make the lid just a tiny bit bigger than the base and then you don't need another die to create this box. I think it's super clever. So for the base, we are keeping the tabs. We're gonna fold on all the scored lines that the die created for us, and we need adhesive on those four tabs. So I like to really be safe with my adhesive. I'm gonna put down some double-sided tape and some liquid glue because then I feel like it's gonna be very secure. That makes me happy. So I have liquid glue here, barely art glue, and my double stick tape, and I just pinch that down for a minute, and then I can move on to the next one. The glue is gonna hold it permanently. The tape is gonna help it hold right away. So I've got both forms of adhesive, and I know this box isn't gonna pop open on the person that I end up giving it to. So there you go, there's the base. It is that easy. The um, die is such a fun tool to have because it makes it quick and easy. It takes the math out of having to cut and score things. I love that. Now this is a critical piece. This little piece is the corner piece that's gonna hold the lid together. You'll need four of them. And again, I'm going to use double stick tape and glue to hold them in place, especially something that's as crucial as this piece right here. So again, liquid glue over the top. I had a little uh, eruption. Does your glue that? It kind of erupts every once in a while has like a little air bubble in it. Okay, to put these on, you wanna put the lid over the base. Pull those corners together, and while you're holding it together, add your little corner bracket pieces. Press that down, and then just repeat that with all four corners, and that's what is gonna hold the lid together. Quite clever and kind of cute too. So there is our box. It's ready to go and really ready to decorate. You know, we can't just leave it like that. So I have some plaid paper also from Lawn Fun. I'm gonna cut out the bow pieces. And you can see I already used this paper before. There's a little tent cut out up there. <laughs> there are three die pieces for the bow. But the long piece, straight long piece, you'll need two of, so actually four in the end. This has scored lines in it that allows you to wrap it around the box, and you can create a belly band where you remove the bow 
off of the box and you would just put the straight ends together and adhere them and then the bow is going to attach the top piece and again you can slide that on and off but I want mine to be permanent so what I'm doing is wrapping it around the lid and creating a new scored line it's actually the line I'm going to use to cut off the excess paper and then I can glue these pieces right to the box it still kind of looks like a belly band but it's not going to be removable and then I will use the bow to cover up that open center piece I like to take my crease tool and just kind of encourage the paper to curl the way I want it to. I'm using double stick tape and going right up the center of this large bow piece. And then I can remove that and also use liquid glue to fold in. I'm not really folding, I'm kind of curling in the bow pieces and they overlap right there in the center. And that long piece wraps around the center. Now this part that looks like the back where I overlap the pieces will actually become the front of the bow. And then we have the tails, we can add this to with that last and final die cut piece. Um, again, I'm using <laughs> two kinds of adhesive. I really especially like really strong adhesive on things that are going to be 3D. So that's why I'm using both you do what works best for you though. <laughs> so I, I might be a little obsessive about the adhesive. I know that. Okay. I have this glitter paper. That's like the glitter's almost like printed. Um, it's not loose glitter on there. And I felt like the red in this paper matched the red in my background paper pretty good. And so I'm going to use the scallop circle gift tag die set to create a tag for this. And I'm going to stamp out all my beaver things and logs. They have cattails in this. They have little hearts. Um, it's a just really cute set. And I love that Lawn Fawn includes those little extras like the logs, a little bow. This one even has a tiny card. So you can create different scenes with them. And I love that so much. It, it's really what makes this set versatile and allows me to bring you lots of different ideas with this set. So let's color. I'm using Copic markers. I love them. Um, any alcohol markers are probably my favorite thing to color with. It just seems so quick and easy to do. So let's color this out with some browns. Now you could do a lot of different browns with this, have a really um, light, coloring on this like tan or you can go dark brown you can give them kind of a white tummy just whatever you like now I have seen um a beaver in real life probably like at a um park a zoo type place um but my husband has seen one in the wild and took a picture and so that's kind of what I have in mind when I'm coloring this out with my brown markers and I'm trying to keep it a little lighter in the center with my E23. You can see the colors I'm using there up on the screen if you want to duplicate this but you know just use what you have and it's just fun to color them out. I like the tail to be pretty dark there so I had that be a little bit darker and a dark brown nose and if you are like me and you color over over your beaver's teeth. That's what a white shell pen is for. <laughs> and then I can also use this opportunity to add some highlights and color those in and it just brings them to life. The highlights are like my favorite part of my colored image. It just really adds that little extra something and I love it. So there they are all colored out. I thought I would show you the heart. I'm using R35 as my darkest color and putting in my shadow layer first. I especially like to go darkest to lightest whenever I'm using reds because when they bleed out, um, if you get like oversaturated on your paper, it's not easy to cover up. So R24 is my lightest color. I just used two on this and this is a good place you could stamp a sentiment. You could also color this so it looks like a wood slice and I think that's really fun too. So now I'm coloring the little opening in my trunk where that's been gnawed off by the beavers and there is tiny little images you can stamp inside of that heart as well. Now here are all the colors I use just in case I got them off screen which sometimes I do because I get so into coloring, I don't always pay attention to where the lid lands. So there you can see all the colors I used. And the coordinating dies, die cut out all the things except the sentiments. And I just love how close 
the Lawn Fawn dies cut out the images. That makes me so happy. So there they are, cute as can be, die cut out and ready to go. So I'm gonna use the beaver that has his hands like open so you could tuck something in. I'm gonna take my X-Acto blade and trace around one of those little paws so I can tuck in this little card because we have a box of cards. I think it's so cute. And then I just laid that down on my tag where I thought I would glue it so I could stamp out these little hearts with mermaid ink. And then we'll put everything together. Now in this die set for the scallop circle tag, there's a little tiny piece that kind of looks like an eyelet when you glue it down. I love that so much. So here he is on his tag, ready to go popped up with a foam square. And this piece right here is the one I think kind of looks like an eyelet when you add it. It's just a little hole reinforcer, but it just adds a little something extra to the tag I love. Now here's some twine. I love scraggly twine, this really natural looking twine. Um, I got this spool from the Dollar Tree. I use it a lot. And then I'm just gonna hang this right around my paper bow. And then there are little dies in the gift box set that you can use to die cut out sentiments. So I die cut out the one that says little notes using some craft cardstock that kind of matches the color of the twine. And if you have glue that seeps out, use a dry paper towel or dry baby wipe as you press it down and it will soft that up. I added a little uh, scrap of my same pattern paper on the inside, which was about three and a half by five inches which is the same size as the four bar cards that go inside. So first I am going to cut this down to seven inches and then I'll cut two five inch pieces and that will give me two cards. I'm gonna score these right down the middle at three and a half and this creates a four bar card and that's what fits inside this box perfectly. And now it's time to create the card fronts. So I cut a piece that is three and a fourth by four and three fourths and create to create my background. I first added a little salvage patina ink just with a really light hand, not perfect. I don't like my skies to be perfectly, perfectly blended. I like a little bit of white showing. And oh my word, I'm so in love with these falling heart stencils. They're little and cute and you could use one stencil or you could use them both. I thought I was only gonna use one, but then I was so in love with it, I used both of them. And you can see I'm just using the same color ink over the top, that salvage patina, which is like my favorite color. I love it. So I'm adding the second layer and this is just tone on tone, which is gonna make those hearts just a little bit more subtle for my sky-like background. And super duper cute. There's all four of them. I'm actually only making three cards today. If you wanna see the fourth and bonus card, I'm gonna be sharing that in a short video. Those are the ones that are vertical in format and you watch them on your phone. They're like one minute and they're fast and they're cute and they're fun. I'm gonna be sharing my fourth card on that format here on my channel. So make sure you subscribe and check out my shorts. I have quite a bit of them. I added some liquid stardust to those backgrounds for some shimmer. And since I was going shimmery, I thought why not make the water for my card with some glitter cardstock. And then I have a layer of grass and I'm doing this same exact thing for all four of my cards. They're gonna be very matchy matchy. So now let's add the stamped pieces. I have the trunk here that has the heart in the center and then I have a little thing of cattails peeking right out of the grass and then my smiling beaver he's quite happy because he have has chopped down this tree he gnawed it down I can't believe beavers can do that it's quite crazy when you think about it right and I stamped I love you right on that tree trunk and now I will add a custom sentiment using some alphabet this this <laughs> This is the Oliver's Stitched ABCs. It's my favorite alphabet. I haven't really bought many others because I love this one so much. I am going to die cut it actually twice. Once from that same pattern paper I used on the box and once from the glitter cardstock I used on my tag. And then I have a little drop shadow behind it and I love that look. So I'm going to add the words miss you. And you can see I use the letter U. I was kind of thinking of conversation hearts and how the words are so abbreviated and repeated that idea on these miniature cards because they're kind of Valentine-like cards, but really could be used anytime. And the other thing I love about lawn fawn sets or stamp sets in general, so many people do it, 
are the punny sentiments. So I'm going to make this a punny sentiment. And um, did you see there? I used my Glad Press and Seal Wrap to pick up the letters once I had them where I wanted and place them back down. So in this stamp set, there is a stamp that says, Miss you a log. And I am going to cut off just the words a log and add it to my card. So I could have just stamped Miss you a log, but I like having the mix of alphabet die cuts with my stamp sentiment. So I did that. And now I have my Miss You A Log card and I mounted that onto the card bases that I made earlier. And now I'm moving on to the second card with these two little beavers holding the heart and it says you plus me. I tuck them just behind the water <clears throat> and I am bringing out the birch tree die set. I have never used this. And one of my goals this year, if you saw in my last video, is to use it or lose it. If I don't use it this year, it's time to get rid of some things. I decided why not make these birch trees brown and use them in my background? What do you think about that? The trees in brown. They could be any tree trunk, right? They don't always have to be the white birch trees. I really ended up liking it, and I hope you do too, but you've got to tell me what you think in the comments below. I added another little log there that's already gnawed off, and then put the little bow on one of the beaver's ears, added the die cut letters to spell out love you. You can see I did the like abbreviated version. And then of course, I'm also going to add my stamp sentiment. I'm doing that on all three of my cards. So it's going to say love you a log. Now let your glue set for a second before you peel off your glad press and seal. Just a little tip. All right. So love you a log it is. All right. Let's add that to our four bar sized card to finish it off and now we'll move on to card number three. I love this giant log. You could really use this with so many things that you already have. I'm gonna have my little beaver balance on the log. This is the same beaver I used on the tag but this time I had him hold the little branch. He's so cute. And this one's going to say thanks. Now, look, the glad press and seal that time was not my friend. And I added the trees on the side again. Once I added them on the second card, I loved it so much. So I've got two cards like that. And I've got thanks a log, miss you a log, love you a log. And look how nice these fit in the box. Now they fit in here perfectly. So this gives me an envelope problem. We'll talk about it as I make an envelope using the Trinity Stamps four bar envelope die set. It's pretty easy to put together, but this box, this envelope will fit my cards perfectly, but it does not fit in the box. Now, Lawn Fawn has four bar envelopes you can buy in their shop that I believe fit in this box. They're a craft color, but then if you want your card to fit it in it, you're going to have to make it a little bit smaller than the size card that I made. You decide what you want to do. Give the envelope separately or make your cards smaller so your cards and your envelopes fit in the box. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure. Not sure. I think I'm going to give my envelopes on the side. So that's the dilemma. You could put anything inside this box. You don't have to put these cards and envelopes. You can put little treats, little cookies, lots of fun things to do with this gift box. So I hope you've enjoyed my episode one of Stamp Set of the Month for January 2023 featuring Would You Be Mine. I will be back again next Thursday, 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time with episode two. So stay tuned. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm going to put my playlist for Stamp Set of the Month because I have done this before right here and you can watch that next. Stay tuned and I will see you very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.